Mount St. Helens, Pinatubo, Vesuvius. Household names conjuring horrific images of death and destruction. Yet even these devastating eruptions are minute compared to some. The island of Santorini, Greece. Thousands of years ago, it endured the wrath of one of the most powerful volcanoes in human history. Firestorms, blizzards of ash, tidal waves, a catastrophe of biblical proportions. It may have even destroyed Europe's first civilization. But in a baffling turn, the volcano collapsed in on itself and sank into the sea, taking its secrets with it. Now, scientists want to understand volcanoes at their most terrifying extreme. Dive into the abyss on a voyage a thousand feet deep to reconstruct a doomsday volcano's day of death and determine if it could erupt again. Without Earth's fiery core, our planet would be a wasteland. The surface would become flat, infertile, and barren. The planet would die. But the same forces that give life also destroy. Without warning or mercy. Of all the forces of nature, volcanoes can be the most destructive. With the power to instantly kill thousands, demolish cities, or blast mountains off the face of the earth. Even wipe out entire civilizations. But there are volcanoes and there are megavolcanoes, nature's version of doomsday. One of them erupted here, 3,600 years ago in Santorini, Greece. Its ring-like shape dates back to catastrophic eruptions in prehistoric times. Then, over thousands of years, scientists believe a massive cone of magma began pushing up inside, early stages of a colossal explosion in the making. When it blew, the eruption blasted the mountain apart. Over the centuries, myth and legend have boiled above this volcano's watery grave. Some have speculated the eruption here was the source of some of the Bible's most compelling tales. The plagues in Egypt, even the parting of the Red Sea. Still unsolved, the fate of the great civilization that thrived here when the mountain blew its top. For 3,600 years, the real stories of the volcano called Thera and the ancient people who lived here were lost at sea. What do you say the depth is here, Jim? Today, National say? Geographic explorer in residence, Robert Ballard, is diving deep into the Aegean Sea, hoping to measure the magnitude of this disaster. It's a mystery because we don't know that much about its history. When it erupted in the Bronze Age, uh, that's a long time ago. And so we're here to try to unlock that chapter of human history. Only by establishing the size and scale of the Thera Blast can Ballard and his team begin to understand what happened here so long ago. 
They know it was big, but how big is a crucial question. By measuring the volcanic ash and debris, they can determine if Thera's deadly force could have reached beyond Santorini and caused the death of a civilization spread out on islands across the Aegean. Getting a chance to uh, explore the ocean floor is like ripping a veil off and seeing the real inner workings of the volcano. So it's a tremendous opportunity. We live on planet Volcano. 2,000 miles beneath our feet, the Earth's inner core is a roiling inferno. Superheated molten rock, or magma, reaching temperatures up to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, surges upwards under extreme pressure. On the surface, the Earth is a jigsaw of seven huge tectonic plates. Magma rises toward the seams between them. When the magma bursts through a rupture in the Earth's crust, a volcano is born. Scientists measure eruptions on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, from zero to eight. Like the Richter scale, it's exponential. An eruption rated six is 10 times the force of a five. Even scientific sources can resort to explosive language to describe the worst of nature's fury. At the top of the index, some volcanologists categorize eruptions rated sevens and eights as colossal. These are the super or mega volcanoes. In 1963, a massive eruption on the ocean floor, more than 400 feet below the surface, sent the 700-acre Surtsey Island rising out of the waters of the North Atlantic. And it only rated a VEI of three. Imagine what the really powerful eruptions can do. Over 50 times each year, one of the planet's more than 500 active volcanoes stirs to life. In 450 cities, half a billion people live in volcano hazard zones. And yet, every few thousand years, a doomsday eruption causes catastrophic death and destruction. They read like a natural disaster hall of fame. Vesuvius destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD, but still rates only a five on the VEI scale. Krakatau in 1883, heard 3,000 miles away, triggering a 100-foot tsunami. A VEI of six. Also in Indonesia in 1815, Mount Tambora, the mother of all blasts in recorded history. A VEI of seven, a hundred times more powerful than Vesuvius. Mega blasts are rare. In the history of the planet, Few eruptions have reached a VEI of seven or eight. One was 74,000 years ago at Toba on Sumatra. Its gigantic debris cloud circled the globe, blocking so much sunlight it may have triggered a new ice age and caused mass extinctions killing off so many of our primitive ancestors. Some speculate it helped select the remaining hominids that became modern man. For years, scientists rated the Santorini eruption a six, possibly not powerful enough to destroy a civilization spread across many different islands. But that's what the expedition is here to find out. Today, 
the tools exist to follow the ancient eruption into the sea and far beyond Santorini, as far as Thera's deadly destruction may have spread. To have the technology to actually do something about it and really go from fiction to nonfiction, from fantasy to fact. I mean, where, where we're going, no one has ever gone before. The ROV, or remotely operated vehicle, named Hercules, with seven cameras, double arm manipulators, and multiple sampling capacity is the cutting edge in deep water exploration. Inside a 10,000 foot umbilical, fiber optics send digital information from the bottom of the Aegean into a big metal box on deck. Inside the control center, expedition pilot Brennan Phillips and navigator Katie Croft drive the ROV and control the tools that will measure debris from the ancient blast, allowing the scientists on board to finally discover the true magnitude of Thera's eruption. So we're going to start heading towards the southwest. This is treacherous terrain diving deep inside an enormous underwater crater called a submarine caldera. An astonishing 10 miles wide, it's the first evidence that a massive explosion occurred here. At some point in the past, an eruption blasted the volcano apart until it collapsed in on itself, plunging most of the mountain deep into the sea. On their screens is the volcanic debris they've come to see. For the first time in thousands of years, the story of Thera's eruption and the fate of the people who lived here begin to unfold. That's a good sample right there. They were probably the first great civilization in human history and the least known because they flourished here then disappear. For thousands of years, they were the stuff of myth and legend and may have remained a tantalizing mystery until archaeologists around 1900 began finding clues of a lost civilization. They left homes and art and science and probably the first indoor plumbing on the planet. But no people. They seemed to vanish. Before Caesar, before Alexander, before Solomon, there were the Minoans. Intricate architecture and a bustling urban lifestyle reveal a surprisingly sophisticated people. For a kingdom built on seafaring trade, the island known as Thera in ancient times was a perfect maritime crossroads. They had this natural harbor. That was what made Thera special. They, they could get in and out of the, just like we're doing right now. The weather's out there, and here we are inside, protected by these tall walls. This is why Thera was such a wonderful place to live. They had no standing army nor defensive fortresses, yet ruled the Eastern Mediterranean for 1,500 years. This is the first real civilization. These were very sophisticated people. When you see the art, you see the, the, the women that were beautiful. The, the mascara, the, the earrings, very impressive. And to see that all destroyed in a flash. The people vanished, and Thera lasted apart. 30,000 Minoans lived in the shadow of the Thera volcano, then disappeared from the face of the earth. The city of Akrotiri, the island's main port, was ground zero.
like its doomed sister city, Pompeii, Akrotiri is preserved in a time capsule of pumice and ash. And yet, the excavations at Akrotiri suggest the people knew there was a ticking time bomb beneath their feet. Because unlike Pompeii, Santorini is curiously empty of skeletal remains. It's a ghost town. It appears the people got out in time. But that's also what archaeologists thought when they excavated Herculaneum, also destroyed by Vesuvius in 79 AD. There were no bodies in that city either. So that leads you to believe that they got away. Herculaneum, they didn't think they died there either till they got to the beach. Till they got down to where they'd run and couldn't get off the island. But there are no bodies on Santorini's beaches, suggesting the accomplished sailors made it off the island, only to meet their fate elsewhere. Did Thera warn them? It's not uncommon for violent earthquakes to precede a volcanic eruption. And all over Akrotiri, evidence points to a period of extreme seismic activity. Even in their art, the Minoans used a highly advanced technique to reinforce their paintings, bonding layers of wet and dry plaster directly to walls. 3,000 years before Renaissance frescoes. A method archaeologists believe was a safeguard against earthquakes. And more evidence of seismic activity. These steps cracked before they were buried in ash, before the eruption. Vessels of paint and plaster clearly indicate the Minoans were already repairing earthquake damage, then left suddenly. After the earthquakes, as magma kept rising inside the volcano, the next phase was a menacing plume of ash. If the tremors didn't convince the Minoans their home was no longer safe, the ash storm may have. Then, Thera blew its top. On the trail of clues Thera left behind, the ROV makes a significant discovery. Okay, let me know if you got it. Where would you like it to go? Is there anything in there right now? Debris from the earliest stages of the eruption. Okay. Two magmas fused together. As one pushed into the other, it set off a chain reaction leading to an explosion of epic proportions. You have a magma chamber that has existing magma in it, and you get fresh magma coming in from the base. It mixes with it and leads to overpressuring in the chamber, and that can trigger an eruption. To a scientist, it's a freeze frame of a doomsday eruption in the making. Inside the magma chamber, super high temperatures and toxic gases under incredible pressure. The new magma destabilizes it. That's when the mountain is ready to blow. So you build up tremendous pressure inside the magma. And finally, when it gets up into the atmosphere, the magma can no longer withstand those pressures. And it literally explodes. It fractures. It blows itself to pieces. After the ash bloom, came the explosion itself. Scientists can now read the whole story of that eruption in the volcanic debris it left behind. The trail starts on land. For more than 20 years, Dr. Floyd McCoy has been making the ancient volcanic rocks speak. 
Layers. The history of this eruption is in the layers. Let's start in this lower layer here. Man walked that surface. Man lived on that surface. His debris is everywhere. But right here, things changed. The eruption started. This layer right here was an initial dusting, a fine dusting of ash. This was followed very soon by the giant blast. Look. Look at the thickness of this deposit. That's the clue on just how massive and big and explosive this eruption was. When I stand here and look at this, it's scary. Each volcano leaves a unique geologic fingerprint in the remains of its eruption. McCoy identifies debris from Thera here on land so Ballard and his underwater team know what they're looking for. <laughs> yeah, those worms are really up. Thera's gigantic debris cloud could have plunged 100,000 square miles into total darkness for days. An area that includes Istanbul, the pyramids of Egypt, all the way to the Persian Gulf. If so, Ballard should be able to find traces of Thera's debris far out to sea. But there are volcanic deposits from countless ancient eruptions all across the bottom of the Aegean. Really steep cliff. Okay. I wonder if it's because... Oh. In the lab, the cores are opened and analyzed. 